Today, folks, we're going to talk about the SCHD, the Schwab, a U.S. dividend equity ETF that recently is under fire because they've been changing their holdings and people are super concerned. So we're going to break down some of those articles talking about those stocks that have been changed, my feelings around it, because it is the sole providing ETF in my RRSP, my Registered Retirement Savings Plan. As a Canadian, I park this ETF here to get that wonderful dividend exposure to the U.S. without having to pay any withholding tax to let this thing snowball over over time. I've held it for almost a couple years now. I'm up like 8%. A lot of people are hitting on this, comparing it to the, the tech growth and obviously the S&P 500. But again, keep in mind, this is just a proponent of the entirety of my portfolio. And I believe offers me a lot of stability in volatile times and continues to cash flow as I'm on a path to financial independence. I plan on drawing the dividends out of this account in an early retirement. If you are on a similar goal, a similar path, go down there, hit that like button and subscribe if you want to join this journey with me. But taking a look, I've got about 70 1,000 converted CAD or about 52,000 sitting in this ETF. And yeah, I pay attention to when they turn stocks over. So everyone's talking about today and a lot of people are hitting on it because not in a good way, but it's because it's only up 3% year to date over the five year here. It's still about three points off an all time high, but a five year rate of return of about, you know, 53 points. I'm really not complaining that much considering this is like one of the largest dividend ETFs that currently exist on the market. Now, from a dividend snowball standpoint, a decade ago, you were getting 25 cents. Today, 74 cents was the last quarterly payment. About 3xing of the dividend, really not that bad. And considering a $10,000 investment in 2014 today would have almost yielded a return of about 30,000 bucks, just there under about 28,000. That is super great. Like, I mean, what a stable way of getting returns and removing the volatility of tech. And I got my tech exposure. Obviously, you know that, right? But today is all about the Schwab turnovers here and what I think about the new holdings because they removed some of the tech companies. The tech weightings have dropped off massively. There's a lot of concern about the companies. They're starting to upper weight. And let's just get into this because the past obviously doesn't represent future returns. But the Schwab U.S. Dividend Equity is the second largest dividend ETF in the marketplace, only behind uh, VIG, which is the Dividend Appreciation ETF, which is, I think, a little more tech-oriented with things like Microsoft and Apple. But it may not seem like a terribly exciting event, but it's the one time a year where the fund turns over fairly sizable chunks of its portfolio. And this time around, there are 23 additions uh, and deletions to the portfolio, which is quite a lot for a fund that only holds 100 names to begin with. Now, which the top 10, we saw two changes, Home Depot and Verizon, which jumped in at second and fifth place, respectively. Both were in the portfolio before this, so they're not new positions, just larger ones. Uh, Broadcom, uh, AVGO, and Merck um, aren't just out of the top 10. They are out of the fund altogether. And Honestly, because the Schwab UF's uh, dividend equity ETF is so conservative in its nature of picking companies, I'm actually not shocked by this. I'm actually um, pretty appeased by them doing so because they would have taken gains, profits off the table and allocated it toward companies that uh, largely are cheap today and largely pay really good yields. Things like Home Depot, things like Verizon, right? But unlike ETFs, you'll find out there, there really isn't a lot of top heaviness in SCHD's portfolio. Even after the reconstitution, the top 10 holdings do account for roughly 40% of the portfolio portfolio, which on the high end, uh, well, which is on the high end, but those individual component weightings only range between 4.69% for AbbVie and 3.39% for Pfizer. There's not much, you know, idiosyncratic, uh, syncret am I saying that right? Idiosyncratic risk to worry about. Uh, and the chances of anyone holding having an outsized effect on the whole portfolio would appear low. And I think that is beautiful because this is an account for income oriented investors. They are, I think they're really doing themselves a service to people like my parents that are in the retirement like that's kind of the the what you want a stock that can outpace inflation with dividend increases and is looking to offer more stability than it is perhaps growth uh, especially in a volatile tech market where things are changing so dramatically with the top 23 ads and removals uh, which has been listed on x here we can see is uh, basically bmy uh, hershey's which i'm, I'm very uh, intrigued by as uh you know an addition here because we've been talking about hershey's a lot um skyworks uh, dks which i'm very intrigued by actually we got a little list here if you want to take a look uh because uh, dick sportings is really intriguing to me skyworks solution also very intriguing but hershey's man I'm a big fan of Hershey's at these price points. Uh, you know, they got Nexstar Media Group, some things I'm not as familiar with. On the removal side, um, what do we got? We got Broadcom, Merck, uh, Automatic Data Processing, Blackstone, 3M. I'm very, I, I'm not as surprised by, you know, 3M has been kind of lackluster on the balance sheet side, struggling a bit. First American Financial Corp. Um, some other ones that are on the lower end that you might be less familiar with, but kind of just uh, getting back to that article and reading a little bit more in depthly into it, we can see that, you know, it's worth noting 
that the last year's SCHD reconstitution also saw about a quarter of the portfolio turnover. So this year's swap of nearly two dozen names isn't unusual. It did, however, result in some significant changes to the allocation at the sector level, right? Because tech used to be quite a big figure. As we can see, technology went from 126 to 8.4%. And again, I, I applaud this because I'm already tech-centric and I want to buy this to offer a bit more stability and income. Financials is kind of de-weighted a little bit, so nothing huge there. Uh, healthcare de-weighted a little bit. Consumer staples uh, increased a little bit, no surprise. Industrials uh, decreased. It looks like we've been getting a little bit more uh, if anything, uh, an equalizing across the board here, uh, because we can see consumer discretion went up a little bit with probably companies like Hershey. Um, yeah, I'm actually like extremely pleased with this. So I have been seeing articles, however, in contrast, uh, like this one that says very bad news for dividend stocks. Um, you know, this was in, in relation to the CHD update. And they were noting in here that basically a lot of these companies are highly affected uh, and again, not a lot of the companies in SCHD, but there were some correlations with this ETF that, you know, when I look, if you look up SCHD, you'll see this, this article come up. But they're saying that basically many of these companies are capital intensive. Uh, rising interest rates means that their cost of capital goes up, uh, thereby uh, compressing their profit spreads considerably. Uh, and they're claiming that the interest rates are largely affecting a lot of these companies, and they are. But I'm honestly saying that these are buying opportunities because interest rates are affecting them, especially things like O Realty Income. You know, some of these companies that have lacked against the uh, S&P 500 and that's why you want to buy them because eventually we're going to get interest rate cuts and that has been my bull thesis on the broader part of the dividend investing stocks yeah they haven't been performing as well but that might mean that they're trading at you know favorable levels so let's just talk about the interest rates and do a quick side-by-side -side comparison here because if we take a look at voo stock uh, in comparison to schd just to see over time like how the performance has stood up and i think this is this is a very tell sign of the interest rate cycle and what it's taking effect on right because if you go year to date we can see that there's a, a mass difference here and keep in mind the dividends aren't included in the total return because if you look at this chart we're actually at all-time highs for schd but that's taking in again total return with dividends but there's also a slight dividend from you know a voo but that's not in here this is just price charts uh, on the stock prices but you zoom out to the one year right and you can see that the disconnection gets even larger if you bought voo you'd be up 30 percent almost 31 and comparable to schd that's up almost 11. you zoom out on the five year here and all of a sudden that disconnection doesn't look so bad because you know, we can see that SHD continually has trailed VOO, but again, keep in mind, if you're collecting those dividends, they're almost exactly in line. And the real disconnection happened right around, you know, spring of 2023. And the reason for that, I think, is because of the disconnect between the performance of tech companies in a high interest rate environment and dividend companies in a high interest rate environment. Because companies like Google, Apple, Microsoft have such resilient balance sheets, have such cash capabilities to do share buybacks and increase margins, and Meta especially, I mean, we've seen such a divergence really propelling that, especially with NVIDIA and the robotics and chips. All of that has gone to the frigging moon, which could lead to an idea that we are sitting in an overvalued tech market, right? And there's risk to that. Whereas SCHD is holding companies like Verizon, for crying out loud, and Home Depot and companies that are largely affected uh, by the interest rate cycle in real estate market. I mean, you look at Verizon here and you zoom out and it's just been an absolute calamity, but their price to earnings looks a little bit more favorable. The dividend, especially when you take a look at what might happen once we get into an interest rate cut cycle that's likely to start at the end of this year and into 2025, right? That's when we could start seeing the housing market start to, you know, readjust and maybe start going to the upside again, whereas it's been kind of fluttering a little bit and holding good and strong, starting to go up a little bit, but nothing like it would be if interest rates were more favorable to allow people to get approved for mortgages. And Home Depot is starting to retest its all-time highs here as well, but we're about eight, 10 points off, give or take. And these are all companies that are largely affected by this, which is why I love SCHD, because you're buying into that aspect of the market that has been suppressed, has been lagging, and is likely going to see somewhat of a, a compression to the upside when they can start adding back those interest payments to their bottom line instead of giving it to the bank. So that's something that you just want to keep in mind. And, you know, I, I talk about the four fund portfolio. Now, obviously, I buy individual stocks. But I think if you just want a simple four fund portfolio, you're Canadian, I really recommend equally spreading your money between SCHD, VOO. You could also buy VFV if you just want the Canadian dollar version for VOO. You could buy uh, basically the Qs, QQQ, great ETF for tech. And then you could buy VDY. I think those four ETFs uh, with some cash on the side in case the market gets into a, a black swan event puts you in probably the strongest position. And then, you know, do what I do as well. Take a little bit of that money and speculate on some of these individual companies that you think have long-term potential 
potential for great returns. I honestly think that's the best thing you could possibly do with a portfolio. And it's not financial advice. I'm a clown on the internet. Take that for what it's worth. But I'll keep buying SEHD and it'll continue to be the sole holding uh, probably within this portfolio. I don't like DGRO or I think it's DGRO or even like the VIG, uh, you know, the, the Vanguard uh, dividend appreciation because it is pretty tech centric. And I like owning my tech companies uh, through other ETFs. So I think SEHD serves its purpose wonderfully if you are sitting in a phase of retirement or looking to get dividend growth, take advantage of, you know, um, just income in and of itself without the risk uh, and the extreme volatility that comes with tech. But that's just my personal opinion. I could be wrong. You know, take that for what it's worth, but I'll pass that question off to you. I'd love to know what you think. And if you're buying SHD in that comment section below.